From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening, thank you for joining us. Our top story, a Fort Wainwright soldier died early Wednesday in a motorcycle accident at Barnett Street and Gaffney Road. That's right, 32-year-old Sergeant Stanley Daniels Jr. was taken to Fairbanks Memorial Hospital just after midnight where he was pronounced dead. Now, Daniels was a military policeman with the 28th Military Police Company and had served three combat assignments totaling 26 months in Afghanistan and Iraq. The cause of the accident remains under investigation. And in other news this evening, the 2015 wildfire season in Alaska is now the seventh largest on record, according to fire officials, with 3.8 million acres burned. The acreage burn this year beats out the summer of 1941, when over 3.6 million acres burned in the state. Now, yesterday, wildfires collectively grew by 800,000 acres. The fire with the most activity is the Big Creek 2 fire near the town of Ruby. Burning is suspended in Fairbanks, Salcha, and the Rail Belt areas. The Alaska Division of Forestry adds that the suspension includes all burn barrels. The Aggie Creek Fire, 30 miles northwest of Fairbanks, is active with 25% containment. Alaska Interagency Coordination Center spokesman Dave Schmidt says firefighters are taking advantage of rain and clear weather to protect structures. The weather forecast is calling for just kind of scattered showers over most of the southern part of the state. The Brooks Range got some significant rain the last couple days, but that front's moving through. They're calling for possible thunder showers or thunderstorms in the interior, uh, but a little bit of rain, but the rain's going to be scattered and not really significant rainfall. So we expect the moderate fire intensity to continue for the next few days, but there are some fires that are drying out. Some of the state is getting sun and those areas are drying out and the activity is increasing on those specific fires. A University of Alaska president hopeful has been touring around the state meeting lawmakers, leaders, and community members. Mary Conlin has more in this report. The University of Alaska presidential candidate Dr. Jim Johnson had a total of 28 meetings this past week with leadership groups and the larger UA community. The former UA executive is currently senior vice president human resources and process transformation at Alaska Communications and is the university's first choice in replacing retiring president Pat Gamble. Johnson spoke at UAF with lawmakers, leaders and community members Thursday evening describing his vision for the UA system. Investment in excellence in access and cost effectiveness. Those are the three real priorities that I'm, I'm pushing and I think that, our, that Alaskans deserve. They deserve high quality education, wide access to it, and cost effective. Attendees voice concerns on subjects such as UA's rural outreach and how the university plans to move forward during challenging fiscal times. Representative David Guttenberg attended the community hearing on Thursday and stated he was a little disappointed in the process since the board had only come up with one name. However, he believes that Jim Johnson is sincerely interested in advancing higher education. I love having somebody that's from here that knows Alaska. It was great, you know, but you can't get into the nuances of it until a guy has a job and you see how he's performing. It's clearly going to be issues with people thinking that um, one campus is being treated by the other, but I think that's going to be his role is to make sure people understand that the things are done in, a, in an evidence-based way instead of a philosophical decision-making process. And I think that was a, a, an interesting comment. Johnson says that in the next decade, he expects academic programs to become stronger but fewer, further stating that, quote, to cut is an opportunity to grow. We are going to need to cut in certain areas, but it's critical at the same time that we grow. And so I'm really asking, inviting, challenging people on our university campuses uh, to have that conversation. The Board of Regents is expected to make a decision by the week of July 28th and will be open to questions, concerns, and comments. This is Mary Conlon reporting. And when we come back, even though the cost of living is going up nationally, here in Alaska it remains steady but still is the fifth highest in the country. Also, it's time for our weekly gardening tip. Tonight we'll show you the proper steps you should take to plant a tree. Those stories and more when we come back. And welcome back. One nonprofit business is working to help ex-offenders re-enter society after being jailed. For the first time in Fairbanks, there is a place where men and women who have recently been released from the Alaska criminal justice system can go to get help they need to re-enter society rather than going back to jail. No Limits Incorporated has opened the Southside Reentry Center located on Romans Way. They say housing is one of the most difficult aspects that recently released criminals have when trying to rebuild their lives. 
Their goal is to reduce the amount of recidivism in the state and particularly here in the interior. The center focuses on those who have a history of substance abuse and provide classes and coaching to help them beat their addiction, land jobs, and ultimately create a stable living situation. We spoke to the president of the Southside Reentry Center. He said it's important to create goals with the people who come to them and give them some stability outside of a jail cell. Seeing the change in the people that have the stable, the stable living environment to, to make the, the transition, it's really imperative that we give them the information, then teach them how to use it. Also allow folks who are in prison right now to be able to go back to their, let's just say they're from the village, but the village doesn't have a probation officer, so they can come get stabilized in Fairbanks and then push themselves right back to their community. The cost of living in Alaska is still high, but isn't rising as fast as it used to, according to a new report by the Alaska Department of Labor and Workforce Development. The state remains among the top five most expensive places to live in the country, although prices in Fairbanks have stayed relatively steady. Utilities continue to be one of the largest cost creators for the Golden Heart City, weighing in at almost two and a half times the national average. Housing prices help even out the overall cost of living, though. The Fairbanks North Star Borough is the least expensive place to buy a house out of all the regions in Alaska. State Department of Labor economist Neil Freed says while the last frontier typically follows national inflation related expense measures, the state's overall housing market may break the trend moving forward. The national housing market is pretty hot right now um, and has been seeing significant annual increases um, over the last three or four years and that hasn't been as true um, in Alaska and, and so in that case um, that might mean that our, the change in our cost of living could be a little more muted than the rest of the country. With a great weather expected this weekend, this would be a great time to plant a tree. That's right, tonight on Gardening Tips, you'll find out how to do it properly. Hi, this is Steven Seafelt from the Cooperative Extension Service, and this week's Garden Tips is all about planting trees. This is a good time of year to plant trees. Your soil's warm, so you're going to get good root growth, and when you're planting a tree, you have to remember that those roots have been in those pots for probably a couple of years and they're pretty bound up. So you're gonna need to give them a good space to spread out from that pot area. So when you dig the area for your tree, make it much larger than what the pot is. And after you've made this really large hole, put your tree in there, add lots of compost or, or manure or soil amendments that's gonna improve the quality of your soil. You want lots of organic matter so it's gonna hold water and that's gonna really help it in the winter time. And if you've got a big soft area for your roots to explore, your tree is gonna be a lot stronger uh, when the winter comes. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is dig a hole and that hole is gonna be bigger than the size of the pot that the tree's in. The next thing we're gonna be doing is adding compost to the soil that we're adding back to where the tree is all around it. And then the third thing we're gonna do is to pack it in nice and tight. And finally, we're gonna water it. And with that, your tree should take off. Remember to keep coming back from time to time and watering it and watering it deep. Um, so lots of water, but only occasionally. At the Cooperative Extension Service, we have a really nice bulletin on how to plant trees, how to prune them and take care of them. This can only be gotten by downloading it online from the Cooperative Extension website. Please join us again next week for gardening tips when we'll discuss how to make your lawns, your yards, your gardens more beautiful. Gardening tips brought to you by Fairbanks Stump Grinders and by Midnight Sun Family Medicine. All right, Interesting. Be before we go into sports, okay. I gotta get this right. Recidivism. 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 Oh, I think I got it. Okay, we can continue. I feel <gasps> All right, Joe Cook is up next with sports, and we pop into a basketball camp and see some great finishes in the Loftus Mile Run. That's cool. Yeah. Also, you'll see footage from a ticker tape parade in New York. See who got the key to the city after the break. That was me. Yeah.
Welcome back, Interior Sports fans. Let's get the weekend started right with your local Friday sportscast. I'm Joe Cook. Today at Tananot Middle School, local basketball players got a few hints and tips from some pros. Day two of the True Game Gannon Baker basketball camp featured some local high school and middle school players learning and executing various drills. Neil Roberts out of Virginia, who coaches at Chukak High School, helped run the afternoon session, along with former Nanak Parrish West. Baker was also there after his morning session. Baker, a former international pro journey from Florida to Alaska to hold his camps and clinics in the 49th state for the first time. He hopes to return to Alaska and the interior to continue to help develop players with basketball skills and skills in life. I just want to plant the seed of you know what hard work is, what passion really is, and if they don't become basketball players, they can carry that passion into other areas of their life to be successful. Because that's that's all I try to do is use basketball as a platform to help these kids build a, a really good co career and be a so-called pillar in society. They're trying to let us know like. As hard as you work, there's there's more people out in the country and everything. They're working ten times harder, so you just gotta keep competing. And after some rescheduling because the smoke gym lost some mile runs took place on Thursday night, over 100 people ages 10 and up signed up for the honorary mile race at West Valley High School. Riga Grubis, she ran a 713 to win the girls 10 through 11 heat. And Mason Paul won his heat in the boys 12 to 14 class, but Ian Canaston won the division with a 605 time. Bonnie Brooks turned back the clock running 730 to win the women's 50 to 54 class. First time in nine years she ran 730 or less, but the Latham class of 2011 swept the overall titles. Kimberly Fitzgerald used a healthy fear of Davia Flaherty and Erica Burr to win the women's division with a great kick in the last 800 meters. Dylan Nixon Helms ran a sub five minute mile and also used a kick in the last 800 to pass the always solid Devin McDowell. Helms, who will be running for UAF this fall, was grateful for a competitive run. I just wanted to be under five minutes. I mean, I haven't ran a mile race since the Golden Mile after my senior year, so I'm just coming into this. This is the middle of my workout week, and I wasn't expecting anything spectacular, but Devin gave me a good race, and can't complain about it. I tried to move up a little bit and had that pack to bring me with me because they were surging the whole, the whole time, too, and... That last lap, I just still felt good, and then I caught up to those other people, and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> and then by then, the race was over. So. <laughs> and two local club soccer teams split their first two games in a tournament in Minnesota today. The U14 Eclipse 01 girls team lost one to nothing on penalty kicks in their opener against STMA United out of Minnesota in the Schwann USA Cup in Blaine, Minnesota. The Eclipse notched a 2 0 victory in their second game over Sirocco Blue of Wisconsin. Cami Steele and Hannah Olsen scored for the Eclipse. In the U16 division, the Eclipse 99 team lost their opener 2 1 to Integrity Explosion out of Illinois, but they recovered against Adena with a 3 1 win, scoring three unanswered in a comeback win. Kennedy Atley, Riley Baumgartner, and Kaylin Heilenkin scored. Teams resume play tomorrow. And there is a full weekend of sports events for you to enjoy and participate in. Get your running shoes for Saturday. The North Pole Triathlon starts at 9 a.m. from the China Lakes Recreation Area. There is a 1,500 meter swim, 40K bike, and 10K run in this USA Triathlon sanctioned event. The Jingle All the Way 5K run and walk starts at 10 a.m. from the Santa Claus House in North Pole. And the 15th Ester Dome Ass Kicker begins at 10 a.m. this Sunday from the Esther Gold Camp parking lot. That's a six and three quarter mile run. In Legion Baseball, the Alaska Wild hosts the Valley at noon and three for a twin bill on Saturday. The 49ers, they will play the Valley on Sunday at 11 at Marlin Field. The Gold Panthers host the Anchorage Bucks for a doubleheader starting at five on Saturday. And then the teams, they come back to play Sunday at seven o'clock as well. The United States women's national team solidified themselves in American lore even in celebration today. New York City honored the World Cup champion team with a ticker tape parade. The ladies captured the moment with selfies and videos. They cruised through the New York streets and the famous Canyon of Heroes. But it was all about the heroines today. The women's team is the first group of women to get a ticker tape parade in New York in 55 years. Team USA is the first country to win three women's World Cups. Their last World Cup was in 1999. Over 3,500 fans cheered them on. The parade ended at City Hall where New York Mayor Bill de Blasio gave them the key to the city. What an honor, Mayor. I can't even thank you enough for giving us this experience and for you guys. You guys made it even better 
by standing alongside the streets cheering you saw the whole way. It's been unbelievable. The World Cup was a dream come true, but having this parade here in New York City was one of the best moments of my entire life, and we all feel the same. So thank you guys for all your support. And that's it for sports tonight. Your weekend weather forecast is coming up next, and we'll catch you next time. Welcome back to the weather block of our newscast. Mike Schultz is not here. He had people to see, things to do, so I'm, you know, subbing for him. So let's get right to it with the conditions in our daily almanac. Recent high was 73 degrees. Recent low was 53 degrees. Not bad. 20 degree spread. Record high was 94 in 1975. I was one years old. Yeah. Record low 34 degrees in 1934. Sunrise 337 AM. Sunset won't happen until tomorrow, 1215. Daylight hours total 20 hours, 41 minutes. That's a uh, loss of four minutes over yesterday. Let's get to it and see around the state today. Fort Yukon checking in at 64 degrees today. Pretty nice. 39 for Barrow on the west coast. Nome 61 degrees. Bethel 64. Pretty hot for them. In the Anchorage Bowl, 69 degrees. They did have some wet weather. Same as Kodiak with 57. And on the Panhandle, Juno checking in with 58 degrees. 65 for Ketchikan. Wet conditions there as well. Let's go ahead and take a look down in the lower 48. Here we go. We stop. There we go. As you can see, there is a storm system in the central and plain states moving all the way up into the Minnesota area and going eastwards into Illinois as well. That is bringing thunderstorms so far not severe. But in the southwest, look at that beautiful, gorgeous Las Vegas, 93 degrees. Phoenix, a scorcher with 104. And this is the time of year when, uh, you know, the southern states like Dallas, Texas right there checking in at 92 degrees. It's going to even get hotter throughout the month. New Orleans checking in 91 degrees. And where I want to be right now, Miami, Florida, 91 degrees. And in the East Coast, Northeast rather, New York 84 degrees, DC checking in at 88. Pretty cool for them. Looking at the satellite radar, you can see that storm system developed towards uh, over the central Rockies and then it bursts out over the central Plain states and that's going to continue uh, the weather pattern into the weekend. But all in all, not too severe for them and of course a lot of states need rain. So let's go ahead back up to Alaska where we want to focus on the northern part of our state. Partly cloudy at Barrow and Nome. For Yukon's going to check in tomorrow, hopefully around 70 degrees. Barrow at 40 and Nome 67. For the interior, well, check it out guys. We're going to continue into the upper 70s. Delta may see some uh, late afternoon thunderstorms at 71 degrees and uh, Healy as well with scattered showers and thunderstorms for them as well. Go ahead now, take a look at the panhandle, see what we can see. Rain likely for Juneau, chance of rain for Ketchikan. We're going to put them in the low 60s for the week or for the weekend rather. On the southwest, mixed bag of weather. Bethel at 70 degrees, Cold Bay 54, Kodiak 61, showers in all three communities. There we go, South Central, Anchorage 66 degrees, uh, pretty clear for them. Valdez getting to get some moisture as well as Homer overcast conditions right there for them or cloudy conditions as we say. Let's go ahead now and take a look at our short range forecast. Tonight 53 degrees, that's still relatively warm for an overnight forecast. Nice evening though, scattered clouds. Take a look at tomorrow, nice 77 degrees. Lots of sun and hopefully no smoke. That's the way the uh, wind conditions are set right now. We actually have a nice little parameter of air that's blowing through with no smoke coming in downwind. Let's take a look at our extended look outlook for the weekend ahead. 75 degrees also for Sunday. We could see some moisture trickle in on Monday, but that's going to clear out by Tuesdays and the temperatures are going to increase by midweek. 75 is our uh, 75 degrees for Wednesday and that is our best chance for rain into Thursday and overnight lows into the 50s. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you don't get outside this weekend, well, I, I don't know what to say. This is the perfect conditions and this is where you want to be this time of year right in Fairbanks, Alaska with those kind of temps. All right, sounds good. Yeah, nice. Perfect. Uh, so do you have plans? Uh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of be working. You'll see me around softball. Yeah, baseball. stop in and say I'll hi be, to Joe. All our tournaments. Yeah. Me and my Any softball for you this weekend? No, we're not playing in the tournament. Okay, oh, well, you, I can, know. you can go out there and watch. And You're welcome. Break. You're welcome, yeah. guys, Take who are playing. <laughs> Take Very good, because they're yeah, scorching up the, the league there. That's yeah, good. except for this Wednesday, we didn't really scorch it up, but that's yeah. okay. You weren't we're there. We're getting back into it. Club soda. Highlights next week. No, sorry. Okay, that will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We're glad you could join us. All right, tonight on NBC Nightly News, the Confederate flag was removed from the South Carolina State House grounds today. Uh, Lester Holt will have more with that next. Be sure and tune in tomorrow for the Saturday edition of the Fairbanks mm -hmm. Evening News and News Center Fighter with Katie Looper and Mike Fussell. That's right. And from all of us here at the News Center, we hope you have a great night and a better weekend.